Building a CNC router has been an exciting project for all of us here at Woodsmith Magazine. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how it works and how to get it set up and moving that first time. So, how does a CNC router work? Well, it works by dividing space into three different coordinate systems, X, Y, and Z. This gantry moves the length of our machine and that is set as the x-axis. This portion of our router moves back and forth, front to back, and that's the y-axis. The router moves up and down, and that's our z-axis. So, what is CNC routing? It's basically a list of commands which tell our machine to go to a designated x, y, and z coordinate, time and time and time again. So, how do we get all of this to move? Well, it moves by way of three stepper motors. We have one here, which is for the z-axis, one here for the y, and then there's a motor tucked in below on this end, which is for the x-axis. Each of these motors is attached to a lead screw. Now, these lead screws are interesting. Now, you think about a bolt. A bolt has a single thread wrapping around a cylinder. A lead screw, in this case, has five individual threads. Well, those five threads mean fast movement. And those five threads interact with a special kind of nut. And it's called an anti-backlash nut. See, any movement, any rattling at all is going to cause some problems with accuracy. So when we talk about machine design, we want to eliminate any kind of backlash. And an anti-backlash nut is sprung and grips that five-threaded lead screw all the time. These motors are controlled by a little box here called a driver, and each one has an individual driver. These drivers and the motors are powered by a 24-volt transformer, and all of this interfaces with our computer through a breakout board. Now, a little bit more about the motors. These are called stepper motors. A stepper motor is broken down into 200 individual steps per revolution. Those individual steps are then broken down further electronically by settings we make with the drivers. The driver can break that, those 200 steps down by half, by quarter, and in this case all the way up to 64 individual steps per each of those 200 steps. So that's about 12,800 individual steps that are possible. The driver that we use to control the x-axis motor, well, that has a division all the way down to 1 250th, and I believe that would be 50,000 individual steps. Now, for our purposes, for a woodworking machine, I have the drivers all set at one, a one quarter step. So that means there are 800 individual steps per revolution of the motor. And those steps give us resolution. So it's a combination of how the machine operates, the torque, and the resolution as to how many steps we choose. So with that said, the next step for us is to go to the computer and we're going to talk a little bit about the different softwares which will operate our machine. To operate our CNC machine, it requires three separate pieces of software. Now the first thing I want to say to you is, if you think you're going to be spending all your time at a computer trying to get this thing to move and to operate, that it just spoils all the fun of it, well, don't think that at all. When it comes to software, there's a lot of layers to it, but you only need to know enough to accomplish what you need to do, what you want to do. You can learn additional traits of the software over time, but initially, you only need to know enough to get started. And I want to assure you, you're not going to have to be a computer expert, a software expert, or spend all your time staring at this screen. So, let's get started talking a little bit about the software. There are three different softwares that we need to use. One is a CAD software, Computer Aided Design. That can be as simple as a drawing program in two dimensions that exports as a vector file, or it can be a program which offers three-dimensional modeling. And there are a lot of good options that are low cost and that are easy to use. Once we have a form designed using a CAD program, 
We then need a CAM program, computer-aided machining, and that is going to take that picture, that form, and it's going to interpret it into what's called G-code. And G-code is an instruction sheet for this machine. G-code is the X, the Y, and the Z coordinate system that makes all of this work. The last piece of software is going to be an operating program to take the G-code and simply tell the different motors what to do. And so that's what we're going to deal with right now. For our machine, I've chosen Mach 3 as the operating program. Now, to get it to work, if you've just built your machine, there's a little bit of setup that we need to do. So let's talk about that. When we pull up our screen here, we need to go to the configuration drop-down and work our way through some of these different items. So we're going to go first to select native units. And all we're doing here is selecting whether to work in inches or to work in metric. I'm going to choose inches. Back to configuration, I'm choosing ports and pins. Your machine should have automatically picked up on the port for your computer. We only need this first port to be enabled and the number of that port in that box. You see, with all these, with these programs, you can ignore what you don't need. And so when I say don't be intimidated, like I said, you need to know enough to get things to work, but you don't need to be intimidated by, and you should not be punching into boxes and entering things that you're not sure of. We're now going to move on to motor tuning. Now, there are a couple of input boxes down below here. The first one says steps per, in this case, steps per inch. Now, if you remember, we were talking earlier about the motors, and they have 200 steps built into them. We chose a one-quarter setting on our drivers, and we have two, for each two revolutions of our lead screw, we travel an inch. So if we multiply that out, we get a number of 1,600 steps per inch of travel. And that's what I've entered in to this first box, 1,600. That will be the same number for the x-axis, the y, and the z. So we're individually setting up each motor. We then choose a maximum velocity for the motor to move as we set up our, for our different cuts. The final speed, when you're actually using the machine to make a cut, is determined in a different setup, a different situation that creates the G-code. Right now, this is just a maximum speed for moving the router about. And I've chosen 120 inches per minute of travel. There's an acceleration number, in this case inches per second. I've chosen 40. When I'm done with that, I will then move on to my y-axis. I will enter the same numbers in. I will move to my z-axis. And for the z, I've slowed the travel down a little bit, since it doesn't have all that much far to go, to 40 inches per minute. And I've halved the acceleration to 20. With that done, I'll press OK, and it'll be entered into the system. Now, there are other things down here on the configuration list. But for the most part, we're done. And as I said, if you don't know what it is, don't touch it. In time, you'll explore and you'll learn. One thing I've done here is I've hit the, I'll hit the tab, and you can see this box here on my right. And that has uh, some push buttons for Z, X, and Y. And those, that, this is how we actually start to move our machine. So when I press positive X, the machine moves in a positive X direction relative to an origin point right here. When I press negative X, it's going to return. When I press positive Y, I'm going to, my router is moving in that positive direction. And of course, when I hit negative Y, it returns. And then of course, the same thing with the Z. Positive Z and negative Z. 
Now, if you find after building your machine that one of these directions is moving opposite to what you would like, it's a pretty easy fix. You can do it in the software or you can go to your driver box and simply switch the CP minus and CP plus wires and that will change the direction of travel. Once you've established your travel and you're content with that, now you know how to move your router back and forth. Let's talk about a few of the more, a few more of the areas within this box. There's a feed rate here which you can adjust up and down as the machine is actually running. So if you find you're moving a little faster than you want, you can slow your feed down. If you want to make it a little faster, you can do that as well. One of the things that we need to do before initiating our program is we need to zero out the router. And that means that we need to position it relative to our workpiece. Now I have a board here on the router table and my origin point is in the lower left hand corner. And so what I've done previously is that I've moved my router into that lower left hand corner and I've established a zero point for the X axis, a zero point for the Y, and I also dropped my router to the point where the bit touched the top surface of the wood and zeroed out my Z axis. And that gives the machine a, a sense of where it is to the workpiece and a place for us to start. If we go over here, we'll see a cycle start button that's green. The green means go. Yellow means pause and be cautious. And red, I imagine you can figure that one out, it means stop and stop right now. So to get our machine going, give you a little demonstration, I'm going to load a file I have on a flash drive. I'm going to open it. It's loaded in. All that's left for me to do is turn on the router and hit the cycle start and we'll see some action. WoodsmithPlans.com. Hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts, all fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. WoodsmithPlans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.